Hey everybody, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome to a video series where I showcase what I found to be the best in slot min-max build for one of the 12 Midnight Suns heroes. I will also give a quick review of all the hero abilities to show what other potential fun build options the hero may have, or reveal the thought process that ultimately led me to the one and only best choice to min-max said hero. Once we have given an overview of the hero, I will give a tier list rating in direct comparison to the other 12 heroes. We'll also mention what battle items and heroes synergize best with this build. This is a one of 12 part series. If you end up finding this video informative or helpful in any ways, please check the video description for a full playlist of my series for Midnight Suns. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get into today's hero. Today's hero is none other than Robbie Ray's The Spirit of Vengeance or better known as Go. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider has a special place in my heart as I had the privilege of working on both the Ghost Rider movies featuring Nicolas Cage. Here in the Midnight Suns universe, the developers decided to go with the route of using Robbie Reyes as the spirit of vengeance rather than the classic OG Johnny Blaze. I can't say I completely agree with this decision as the OG Johnny has a soft spot in my heart because I worked on those movies and it just so happened my name is also Johnny, <laughs> so I'm a bit biased to say the least. Speaking more on Robbie Reyes, his personality in the Midnight Suns for me was oftentimes annoying <clears throat> as he can be extremely immature and seriously lacks confidence. He was always complaining that he doesn't belong in this group, that he's never going to be good enough, yet he harnesses the greatest power of all, the Spirit of Vengeance. It almost makes you wonder how the Spirit of Vengeance actually chose. Robbie Ray as his host. I digress, however, as the story progresses towards more of the end game, you get some more Ghost Rider missions, and at that point, Robbie himself grew on me, and now I overall like the character a bit more. And the developers decided to include Johnny Blaze in the story, so it's a win win. Talking a bit more on Ghost Rider's play style, he was designed to be a heavy hitter pure damage dealer. His damage is so outrageous that it comes with the drawback of dealing damage to himself. This might turn people off playing him, as managing his health levels and playing a game of risk reward might be a bit frustrating at times. But there are certainly easy solutions to working around this, and we'll be talking more about that in today's build, but I have to be completely honest. While I was playing through the early and mid game campaign, I found Ghost Rider to be the absolute worst character in the game, not because of his self damaging mechanics, but mainly because the way his cards function without upgrades or without mods. Most situations I found him to either eat up my card plays to do effectively nothing, discord important cards when doing damage, then of course on top of that killing himself to boot. I really didn't enjoy Ghost Rider early on, and I was sorely disappointed because he is, in fact, one of my favorite heroes of the Midnight Suns, and I had high, high expectations for him. Maybe I set my expectations too high. Reaching the end game, however, I really started to unlock his potential through upgrading his cards and then modding them. And now I truly see the pure madness unfold that is the spirit of vengeance. And he is without a doubt one heavy hitting badass that no longer disappoints me whatsoever so he certainly comes around with a little bit of investment so talking on his tier list rating in comparison to the other heroes, for all the reasons I mentioned, Ghost Rider without mods is still a heavy hitting character, but lacks in many areas without those much needed upgrades and mods. So I am placing him at the top of the B tier without mods, which is actually very generous considering all the things I just mentioned about him. With mods, he is absolutely an A tier character. While majority of the other heroes surpass him in ranking, that doesn't mean he is bad or worse 
by any means. He's overall an A tier hero, meaning he can dish it out and keep up with the rest of them. I just found the other heroes offer slightly a bit more, which you could learn more about in this series covering those other heroes. So let's take a closer look at my build and my recommendations for Ghost Rider. Let's kick things off by looking at my hero profile. My Ghost Rider is currently champion level 30 with a friendship level of 17. He's been on 26 missions with my hunter. My most played ability is lash with 135 lashes. And you can see I've used a nice mixture of almost all of his abilities in the game, trying to figure out exactly what direction to go with him and what would be best for him. And I've ultimately come up with what I think is the best overall option. So he has KO'd 332 enemies with only being on 26 missions. A quick comparison to my Wanda, for example, she's champion level 100. She's been on 100 missions and she's also KO'd 326. Wanted to use that as an example because Ghost Rider is getting a lot of KOs. He really is a good DPS and he's getting a lot of value even though he hasn't been on that many missions. So let's talk about my build before we actually go into the individual cards and the different various cards I have used throughout different builds for him. Let's talk about his passive. Filling the souls meter increases max health by 15% to a limit of two per mission and the souls meter requires one less soul to fill. You are unable to actually see this anywhere in the menus here, but once you're in a mission, if you hover over Ghost Rider, you can see that he has a souls meter and I I believe by default it's set to four once you get this passive upgraded it's down to three and that means every time he kills an enemy he collects a soul once you've killed three enemies you've effectively filled the souls meter which will increase his health by 15 percent you do that twice and he's going to increase his health by 30 percent because you can only do this a max per twice per mission i'd like to see the developers increase this with the uh, ability to upgrade passives to epic and even legend Legendary, increasing that limit to three or four times per mission and possibly even giving you upgraded upgraded drain soul cards which would be much appreciated so one thing it doesn't mention here you can see this card drain soul it will give you one of these cards when the soul meter fills up and that is pretty important we will talk more about the drain soul feature later on in the video when we start to review his cards a bit more in detail so my overall thoughts on this passive is that it's good it's part of his kit it's kind of required for ghost rider to play his play style properly when that health increases it's going to refund you a little bit of the health the health that you lost from damaging yourself and it's just going to give you a larger health pool overall and a lot of his abilities are based on how much health you actually have so therefore when you fill this up twice you're going to be doing effectively 30 percent more damage by having more health so it's a very cool passive you can't really compare it to the other heroes in the game because it's sort of integral part of his overall kit and it's sort of like a necessary passive for what he's currently doing so let's jump over to his stats and talk about this a little bit more his champion level is level 30 which gives him a total of almost 900 health on my current ghost rider if we were to fill up the souls meter twice we're going to get 30 percent more health bringing that from 900 to effectively 1200 and if you get this guy up to like level 100 you can see that my wanda has almost 1200 health so 30 percent of that would be nearly 1600 health why is that important because if you really really like ghost rider and he's one of your most played heroes and you actually push him to champion level 100 plus 200 300 whatever you want to do with him the more health he has the more damage his cards do and because you gain five health every single time you level up and you only gain one offense his cards are only going to get slightly better every level but because he's gaining five health every level his cards are gaining upgrade benefits from both his health and his offense every single level assuming you're using some of those cards that play off damage based on how much health he has so in theory he scales very very well the higher his champion level both his health and his offense are contributing towards the damage of his cards which means he's scaling at a much more rapid rate than the other heroes because their health does not affect how much damage they're doing so there's an argument to be made 
that Ghost Rider could potentially be one of the strongest heroes in the game, depending on how high you push his champion level, which is a really cool bonus effect for this hero. He's a really, really good investment. So talking more about his stats, the number one thing you want to upgrade on him first and foremost over every single other hero in the game is going to be your strength. Increases your knockback distance. This caps at 50% and he has a lot of forceful knockback in any direction, which means you can knock guys anywhere on the map and with 50% increase to that, it's literally anywhere on the map. He can take a character from one side of the map all the way to the other if you fully upgrade this. And that means no matter where your allies are on the map, you'll be able to throw enemies into your allies, giving you a card draw. So this is absolutely important. I also think power is actually really important. I recently changed his build and now I'm wanting to upgrade that power. This caps at 25%. It'll increase the area of the size of your area abilities. Another and super important stat is going to be your willpower, especially early on in the game as you're leveling up. If you have no means to heal him, if you have no means to get his health back up and you are taking several turns to beat missions, regaining 20% of his health every turn is very, very important. I'd say out of all the characters in the game, willpower is most important on Ghost Rider, so I would focus on that for him. Fortitude is also nice. This caps at, I think, 50% as well. This is just going to give him some extra armor going into missions. That extra armor is good because he's already riding low on health, meaning if he gets hit, he's going to die. So if he has some armor sitting there, he's going to be able to take a, a hit or two without actually dying. You don't really need resilience on him, so you can pass on that stat. And then crit chance and crit damage is also really good to have on him for majority of his heroic abilities. However, his base attack lash does not actually do damage. The damage is based off of what the knockback is, which means the card itself doesn't have damage, meaning you cannot pull a crit on lash. So it's less important than other characters, but having a crit chance of 50%, which is the cap, and crit damage at 75% chance, which is the cap, is going to increase the damage of all of your heroics, which do massive, massive amounts of damage. So that is definitely something to add there. I just found that other characters I liked a bit more or that they needed crit chance and crit damage or they got more value out of it because all of their cards could be procced as crit. Whereas only some of his cards, probably half of them, can only proc as crits in my current build. So you get less value at a crit chance of crit damage than you would other heroes. But if this is one of your favorite heroes in the game, I would highly, highly recommend capping out these as well. So he's a pretty heavy investment character. If you spend a lot of time playing him, you're gonna have to put him through the training yard for his strength, his power, his willpower, his fortitude, his crit chance and crit damage. But this makes him a very good investment. You can continuously play him, continuously upgrade him, work on your friendship levels, and you have something to work towards. And all that time invested will make him a complete beast, a true spirit of vengeance. So those are my stat recommendations. Let's get into my current build. Before we actually look at my current build, I want to show you some of the cards in my inventory that I've also upgraded. So I have Straight to Hell, uh, replace Ghost Rider with a drop until next turn, and he recovers some health. So this makes him go into a hole in the ground, heal up, and nobody can target him. This is great if a lot of enemies are targeting him because he disappears and they effectively lose their turn. It's a highly potent card, super valuable, especially if you have a way for him to draw the enemy's attention or if their attention is just drawn to him. It's also good so it means that he will not get get hit, he will not die, and he will recover some of those, some of that HP that he's lost. With the free mod on this, it's it's fine. He can You can play it for free, and you don't have to worry about him dying. The reason I stopped using this is because I generally just kill everything, and I don't have to worry about having a second turn. I try to kill everything on the first turn, and if there's even one mob remaining, one or two big enemies, they're generally focused on someone else, or I generally don't have to worry about him dying. But it is a great option. Hellride, I've no longer using this either, but the mod I highly, highly recommend for Hellride is the draw a card for each KO, because this card will discard your entire hand. So if you happen to get kill a marked enemy, get your card play refunded, you're going to have a card play without any cards to actually use. Drawing cards for each KO is at least going to give you a couple more cards to play. 
So you, if you're going to use Hellride, you absolutely need draw a card for each KO. Otherwise, the card feels kind of bad in most scenarios. I also tried running a second Hellmouth with the ability free on here. So that is an option. You could run two of these in your deck rather than one. And last but not least, I've tried running two Hell's Furies in my deck with on KO draw two cards, which I am still running one. So those are some of the options you can look at, some of the options that I've played around with. But let's go to what I ultimately found to be his best build. So so starting with Lash, forceful knockback in any direction. But the odd thing about this card is Quick is the upgraded version of Lash. So this is what I was saying early on that I didn't like Ghost Rider because when you have this card, it's forceful knockback in any direction, but it's not really doing much. It does a little bit of damage. You might kill an enemy, but it uses your card play. Until you upgrade this, it, do it then only has the Quick effect, which will refund the card play, making it a much, much better card. So this is his bread and butter quick attack but it must be upgraded so early on in the game you can see how kind of bad this must feel until you have the upgraded version and then when you go to mod it i modded it so on ko you draw a ghost rider card because it's forceful knockback in any direction and quick you want to use this to throw a minion into one of your allies throwing it into one of your allies when an ally ko's an enemy because someone was thrown into them you will innately draw a card so this card will draw a ghost rider card and a another card at random, which would be a 33% chance to be another Ghost Rider card. So he could potentially draw two of his own cards. The card play is refunded. The actual card itself is replaced with a new one. And it's just overall massive gains considering it's also generating heroism. As the downside is he will take 160 damage. If you play too many lashes in a row, you do risk him killing himself. So you got to be just a little bit careful. But this for me is probably my favorite quick attack in the entire game especially the way I've modded it. The fact that you can just take anyone from anywhere on the map and throw them into anything is just massive. The forceful knockback with the upgraded strength at 50% makes this the absolute coolest knockback ability because it's any direction and it's forceful and it draws a card and draws a card when thrown into an ally. There's no card that's better than this in terms of quick cards. Absolutely S tier card right here. Next up, we're gonna look at his skill cards, starting with Hellmouth. Create a drop with an increased chance to KO enemies for two turns and he gains one strengthened. So again, speaking to why I didn't like him early on in the game, this did not have the mod free on it. So you'd put a hole in the ground, you'd gain strengthened, but you would lose a card play. It just feels really bad because you just spent a card play and effectively have done nothing. I mean, yes, you gained some strength and yes, there's a hole in the ground, but there's no guarantee that you're going to actually be able to make use out of either his strengthened or that hole in the ground because strength Strengthened does not buff the damage of his Lash because there's no damage on Lash. So it's a little bit saddening when you feel early on in the game when you use a Hellmouth. But in this game, you have to run at least one skill card in your deck. So I was forced to run one of these in my deck and it never felt like I was getting good value out of it until I got the free mod on this. Now you get to create a hole in the ground, you gain that Strengthened and it's free. So even if you don't make use of the hole in the ground, you're still going to make use out of the strengthened when using his heroic attacks and i've started to get a lot of value of that hole in the ground especially because if you lash an enemy into there there's a good chance they're going to get knocked into the abyss and completely die because the hellmouth has an increased chance to ko enemies when thrown into the hellmouth so what you can do with this if you are into save scumming you can save your game with a quick save hit f5 try to throw an enemy into the hole and if they don't go into the hole you could just reload your game and then do a little bit of damage to them which will increase the chance of knocking them into the hole so in the worst case scenario when you only have one card play and you need a you know a yellow situation you could try tossing them into the drop in the ground and if it doesn't work out you could just reload your save so he definitely uh encourages save scumming in, in the sense that he has that drop but yeah now with the free on this mod it's an absolute amazing card just for the fact that it's a free strengthened card next up is Immolate. So I used to run two Hellmouths, which I previously showed you. Uh, that just increased your odds of actually getting that strengthened. But when you draw another one, it starts to feel bad, right? You, you know, like uh, I can have two strengthened, which will mean it'll uh, my strength will last for two turns. But there's a chance you could draw too many Hellmouths, and now it's just getting out of control. So you, now you end up redrawing your Hellmouths when you draw them, and you're just wasting redraws. So I found Immolate was also a great option. Enemies KO'd by Ghost Rider will explode 
explode for 120 damage. This is based off of how much offense you have, and this will also last for two turns. So it just gives him a little bit more of that fire, that explosion, and that like just blowing up souls and stuff, which feels really cool. And that AOE radius does seem to be upgraded by your power. So it's a nice big radius. It will get even bigger if you upgrade his power, meaning you could do some massive AOE damage as a bonus when killing enemies. And it's a free card. Free cards are great because they help you build up EXP quickly. So you're just going to pop it as soon as you get this in your hand. And it has a nice added effect. As mentioned earlier, you can take the straight to hell if you don't feel comfortable. And this will put him in a safe place. It'll force enemies to miss their turn if they're targeting Ghost Rider. And it will heal him a little bit. But he's no longer in play because he's in the depths of hell. So you won't be able to do anything else with him. With Immolate, you can have this right in your hand. You could use it right away and it's going to add damage to what he already has is a good amount of damage. As a bonus, when the enemies explode and they do 120 damage, that damage does not hurt Ghost Rider. It will hurt your allies, but it won't hurt Ghost Rider. And that's great. He's kind of immune to flames and um, it's not going to increase the amount of damage that he's already taking, which which is also a nice uh, bonus. So those are the two skill cards that I ran. You can also run a third attack card, which we will look at his other attack cards in a bit. So you could have two lashes and an attack card and one Hellmouth instead of an Immolate. However, I found running both these skill cards is sufficient and just the two lashes alone is also sufficient. You don't need any more attack cards on Ghost Rider, especially if you're running a Hunter that uses Call to Arms, Withdraw Last Attack Played and Inspire, Withdraw Last Attack Played. All of these are free cards that will redraw your lash, allowing you to go on a lash, a lashing spree. So I find I get like tons of value at a lash and I don't really need anything else. So his first of the heroic abilities that I use is Hell's Fury. Well in hand, this gains plus 80 damage and it's based off, I believe, 50% of your offense. The next time Ghost Rider takes damage from an attack or an ability. So basically, long story short, every time you use a lash, your Hell's Fury gets stronger and stronger stronger. It already does 320 damage. And then every time you take damage, it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And this could potentially hit for two, 3000 damage. If you pull it as a crit, if you buff him with his strength, and then you continuously buff it more and more. The plus 80 damage is going to be a plus 120 damage once you've played Hellmouth and increased his strengthened. So this quickly does at least 600 damage at the very, very bare minimum, which is enough to finish off most enemies or do a nice chunk of damage to them. And it scales pretty much infinitely depending on how much damage he takes. So as I mentioned, I did run two of these in my deck because I found them to be such reliable single target damage and it did feel great. That is totally a viable option and I do recommend running two if that's the way you want to go. The mod that I put on this, however, is on KO draw two cards. That's just going to help with your card draw. It's going to make him a little bit more of a support considering he's already lashing characters in into your allies drawing two cards. Every time he plays a Lash, every time he plays a Hell Fury, he's playing one card to draw two. So you're always going plus one, plus one. Your card, your your hand is growing with every ability. That is also important because Hellmoth and Immolate are free cards that do not replace themselves. So your cards, your hand size will shrink by two if you play both of these cards. But every other ability that he's using, your hand size is increasing. So I found on KO, draw two cards is awesome for this ability. You can, however, roll quick on this, meaning anybody he KOs with this, it will refund the card play. However, I like to run him with characters who mark so I get the card play refunded anyways and I find that there's more emphasis and importance on the ability to draw more card next up we have a judgment consume 25% of Ghost Rider's health which currently is 214 and then do two damage for each health consumed so that this will at the minimum do 440 damage but with strengthened that's going to be about 660 damage so at the very bare minimum this card will likely do 660 damage and it says also damages all nearby enemies and it damages them for the same amount. So this is a 660 damage to everyone in an area. Hence why I say 
upgrade. Now I want to upgrade his power to increase that radius even larger. And then I've modded it so that it draws a card for every KO. So if you manage to KO a whole group of enemies, you're going to draw a whole group's worth of cards. And that's absolutely amazing. Again, adding a little bit of support to your team, replenishing your hand size, and keeping that momentum going. It will, again, however, require Ghost Rider to pair well with a character who marks enemies, assuring that when he kills them, he gets the card play refunded. So once again, you can go with the route if you if you want to change this build and run him without a mark support. You can go Hell's Fury quick and Judgment quick. And that means everybody he kills he will get the card play refunded and he's self-sufficient. The downside and the reason I haven't gone that route is because his hand, your hand size will shrink drastically. Every time he plays a card, your, your, your hand size is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you actually run out of cards. The fact that this draws a card for each KO and this draws two cards, it's just a much better route and you can just bring a mark support uh, on with him and you'll be just fine. Now, originally I didn't run these in my deck until recently. I ran two Hell's Furies, and one Hell Ride. That's also an option you can go with. Two Hell Furies, one Hell Ride, instead of two Judgments. But why did I ultimately come back to using two Judgments? Well, this consumes 25% of his health, meaning it will buff the Hell's Fury in your hand. So now you have double Lashes and double Judgments, all buffing the health Hell's Fury in your hand, making this card just devastating. While Hell's Fury is really good, and it does about the same amount of damage as Judgment, or oh, sometimes a lot more depending on how many times this has been buffed judgment is an aoe it's doing damage to a whole group of enemies and with emulate on all those enemies that are dying are exploding into more and more and more damage so you have this multiplicative chain effect of explosions just damaging everybody creating for some awesome visuals as well the downside to judgment however is if he's already hurting and his health is low, this card will do less damage. And that's why I originally decided to not use this card, because as he got lower and lower in health and he's down to 200 health, this is doing almost nothing. But we will fix that through the use of battle items and healing, and he will never be at low health. He will basically always be at full health, and you don't ever have to worry by simply using a single battle item, which gives him lifesteal. So now that he's at full health, this is always going to do full damage, and this card will get stronger, 30% stronger because every time we collect souls with his passive ability, his max HP is increasing. To my point earlier at the top of the video, the more champion levels you pump into him, the higher his health goes. So his health and his offense are contributing to increasing the power of judgment. Every single champion level he gets, judgment's going to go up in damage from both his health and his offense. This card gains power at a much more rapid rate than any other card in the game. And that's why I've decided to go with two of these. Last but not least, we have the Penance Stare. Consume 50% of Ghost Rider's health to deal damage, four for each health consumed and it fills the soul meter. I did modify this to be quick, so when I kill pretty much any character in the game with this, because this will hit like a Mack truck, I've seen it hit for five, 6,000 damage, you will get the card play refunded. This is a, an amazing card to kill a villain, to kill the big guy on the map, to finish off the juggernaut of all the minions. It will kill anything on the map. It is a single target, but having quick on that, you'll refund the card play and it gets rid of that most threatening character. It's absolutely amazing. I think it might be one of the heavy, heaviest hitting single target abilities in the game in terms of uh, heroic cards. And to my previous point, this card will do damage to him and it will buff your Hell's Fury. So now you have five abilities out of his eight, majority of your abilities, pumping the Hell Fury that's in your hand, making this stronger and stronger and stronger. So that is my overall build those are my recommendations for ghost rider and how i am currently playing him as i mentioned you can easily swap out a second hell's fury you can put hell ride in there as long as you have draw a card for each ko you could put a straight to hell there's some wiggle room in here if you feel like you want to go a different direction but ultimately i feel this is the best overall build especially for the end game now we're going to run over to the forge here and take a look at his other abilities that we did not talk about yet so we talked about hell ride hell mouth lash drain soul is a unique one that we didn't look at. Upgrade
upgraded, this will say full combo gain an extra soul. A full combo just means you dumped all of the chains into one enemy. So it says it's a chain two plus X and it has lifesteal. It gains plus one chain and one heroism cost every time you use this card. So basically if you use this once, the next one you use will have a chain three and then a chain four and so on and so forth. And the cost will go up. The upgraded version full combo gain one soul means you just jumped, you just dumped all the chain attacks into one singular enemy. So the upgraded version isn't that great. And as I mentioned, every time you fill the soul meter on Ghost Rider, it puts one of these in your hand. That's one of his innate abilities. So you have eight cards in your deck. Why would you ever run this card? ever because you're going to get more drained souls as you're playing so he innately comes with a ninth or even tenth card in his deck because every time he fills the soul meter he gains a drained soul the downside to those ones that he's getting through his passive they're not upgraded and they're not modded but i just think if you ran two of these in your deck that were upgraded and they were modded you're taking the place of very very important cards and when you do get a drained soul in your hand now you have too many of them and you have worse versions of them. So in my opinion, you would never ever run this in your deck because you're getting them for free. And oftentimes this card's pretty, pretty weak. It's pretty bad. Now, if you play it with Wanda and she's marking all enemies in an area, that means she's marking minions. So you can run the first chain on a minion that's marked and then dump the rest into another enemy and that will kill a marked minion refunding the card play. Then the next one will be buffed up even more. So oftentimes you can use this on one minion and then dump some damage into to another enemy and then you can start getting those card replay those cards refunded while buffing your future drained souls because this has life steal it's a great way to heal him back up but the card itself only does 80 damage so even a chain two, it's 160 damage. It's pretty worthless in most scenarios. The only time I've actually seen this do damage is once he's strengthened, so he's doing 50% more, and this is at least a chain three, four, or five. Then it starts to get value. So it takes a long time to ramp up, but it is his method of healing himself. We did not look at retribution. When this card is upgraded, it gains two souls. I was using this, and I do see there's value in this, because it does help you fill your soul meter up, and it does 240 damage base damage. Once strengthened, you're looking at 360 damage, but it does discard a card. You can mod this to be quick so that you get the card refund when killing an enemy and you're doing massive amounts of damage. It's pretty decent, but you will be discarding cards. But with the build that I showed you, you can replace Immolate with this instead. And um, you're refilling your hands so quickly and so often that the discard a random card might not hurt too bad. So I do see value in having one retribution in your deck if you've uh, modded it to be quick. And then we basically covered everything else. So one thing I do in this series is I talk about combat items, and it's very, very important that we do that for Ghost Rider in particular. Most of the heroes don't really rely on co that many combat items. Some of my builds do, but in this case, Ghost Rider absolutely, absolutely needs a Vampiric Essence. These are easy to craft. You can craft them at the regular table. They're rare, so you can craft them in quantities and quite often. And it says select a hero. Their damaging cards gain lifesteal for two turns. Free. So for two turns, he's going to be able to get his health back whenever using those heroic abilities. The one thing you must be aware of though, Lash does not do damage. It does the damage when it's knocked into an enemy, but that does not count. So you will not steal health from enemies using your basic Lash attack. Hence why it doesn't hurt to run one of those retribution cards that we just looked at, because that does do damage and that will heal him. So if you want to run a retribution instead of an immolate, that is also another source of healing yourself. But whenever you're using one of those fatty, juicy, heroic cards, those will do tons and tons of damage and just heal him right to full health. And because this is two turns, it gives you enough time to basically clear the whole battlefield. In the most cases, you have a three, three or four turn mission. He's not going to actually start losing health until the third and fourth turn because the first two turns he's doing all his attacks are basically healing him back to full and you don't have to worry about him killing himself. 
himself. Playing with Doctor Strange, you could restore these combat items back into your hand and allow you to play them again. However, I feel like he pairs best with characters that mark, so you might not be able to do that. I also really like the utility belt on him because this allows you to draw two of his cards. And as we looked at with my current build, a lot of his cards generate more cards. So if we're drawing two of his cards, we're going to get the ball rolling and we're going to start drawing a lot more cards from there. And because these are quite easy to craft as well, you can craft them at the forge and you can craft them quite often. Um, you can use these battle items and not worry about restoring them with the Doctor Strange because you craft them quite oftenly. And last but not least, I like to run one card that gives me heroism, which would be a overdrive serum, gain heroism equal to the cost of all heroic cards in your hand, basically filling up your heroism to full, allowing you to play all of his heroic cards because he's not generating that much heroism. Or you could take a nanotech weave, gain two heroism for free. And if your hunter doubles the amount of heroism generated, this will be four. I prefer the overdrive serums and you can craft them every four days at the forge. So they're not that hard to replace. And last but not least, who does Ghost Rider pair up best with? As I mentioned many times throughout this video, characters that mark. So he plays well with Blade, he plays well with Iron Man, and he plays well with my personal favorite, Scarlet Witch. She's one of my favorite characters in the game. She has massive AoE marking, and in probably most of the footage that you've seen me showing in the background here uh, while playing, well, while showcasing Ghost Rider's build, he was most likely paired up with Scarlet Witch on majority of those missions, if not all of them. I find that they're the best pairing. They go great together. If you're going out on a, a Scarlet mission, you might as well bring Ghost Rider. If you're going out on a Ghost Rider mission, you might as well bring Scarlet. I feel like they're they're meant for each other. They pair well with each other. And the, yeah, it's, 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 it's a perfect harmony. In the case you want to pair him with more heroes that do not mark, you might have to run a different build on Ghost Rider, as I mentioned, putting more quick on your abilities. And then you can bring a hero that draws cards such as a Doctor Strange or a Captain America. Those characters are really, really good at drawing cards. So it might not hurt to run two different builds with Ghost Rider if you want to pair him with more heroes, getting more use out of him. That would be my recommendation to put quick on his heroic cards. In the next video that I do, I'll be covering Spider-Man and I've turned Spider-Man into a Mark support. And it's a very particularly interesting build because you'll see in that video what I've done to him allows you to mark two on all enemies rather than one making him an actually a very a very effective mark support and i think he would also pair really well with ghost rider with my build boom and that's my overall recommendations for ghost rider the character took a while to grow on me but now i absolutely love him he's an absolute monster a killing machine a big dps really fun character to play and that's my build recommendation for him what did you guys think did you find this video informative and helpful in any way is there a different build they're using for him that i'm unaware of please share your thoughts down in the comments below if you found this guide helpful or informative in any way please do leave it a like and subscribe and also check the description for my modding guide if you want to learn how to achieve mods very easily i think you'll find that guide very helpful as well and that's going to do it for me in today's episode i'm johnny five alive thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye now.